own lives. In the name that is above every name. I pray that the spirit of revelation will rest upon everybody under the sound of my voice. I stand against all plans of the enemy. I stand against spirits that causes people to misunderstand your word, to mishandle your word, to misjudge your word. But I pray that, Father, those that are under the influence of my voice will receive the spirit of understanding. As I disappear, may you appear, Jesus. As I decrease, may you increase, Jesus. Father, think through my mind. Lord, speak through my lips. Touch through my hands. It is never by might, never by power, but it is by your spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It is in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say, that is so. We are live already, Rev. Right? I see people are tuning in on what is this again? YouTube. It's good to see everybody. It's good to see everybody. Today I wanna teach prophetically. I'm an apostle by God's grace. Meaning I'm a man of revelation. Believe it or not, if you have and following me, you will know that nothing moves me but the word. We, we will talk about the rest later. Just give me the word. But I want to teach prophetically. What that means is this message is tailor-made for you. So whenever I teach prophetically, it simply means I'm not here to talk to all people. Or to everybody. But I'm here to talk to you. So I have a word from the Lord for you. And you need to be able to receive it with everything that is in you. Go ahead and lift up your Bible so that we flow in the Holy Ghost. Lift up your Bible. If you don't have your Bible, get it. If you can't get it, you're at work, go ahead and lift up your hand. Say after me, this is my Bible. I believe it contains the word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I will do what it says I will do. Today I'll be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. Ready to receive the incorruptible word of God. And my life shall never, ever be the same again. Somebody shout glory in the building. Hallelujah. I want to see everybody on Zoom before we flow. Wave your hand in the Holy Ghost because this is your service. Wave your hand. USA, this is your time. USA, this is your time. Wave your hand in the Holy Ghost. USA, this is your time. Hallelujah. What are we talking about today? Pay attention now. Fasten your seatbelts because we are taking off and I'm taking you somewhere. What are we talking about today? Today, I'm ministering under the subject how to provoke the enablement power of God. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. You see, I always wanted to teach on this message. But every time I wanted to teach this very message that I'm about to teach on, the Holy Spirit will say to me, it's not your time. Because remember, revelation is qualified by time. So time qualifies revelation. Time qualifies manifestations. Jesus in the book of John said, there are so many things that I wanted to tell you, but you will not bear them now. How bit when the spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, comes upon you, you see now, he will begin to teach you all things. 
Meaning, I want to give you something, but time is refusing. So today, as I was in prayer, I thought to myself, I'm going to talk about spiritual gates. And I was so excited. But the Holy Spirit said, talk about this. So today, we are talking about how to provoke the power of God. How to provoke the enablement power of God. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, let us quickly go to the Bible in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 and it has to be verse 20. It has to be verse 20. Uh, make sure you have your Bible with you. It's very important. It's very important to have your Bible with you. So if you can quickly get your Bible, um, please do that. Please do that. You, you have it? Oh, all right. Read for us, please. The yes, book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. That's correct. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. It says what? Now unto him uh -huh. that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, mm. according to the power that worketh in us. Paul says now, thank you so much, Sister Nankasmulu, please be seated. Paul says now unto him that is able. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. He says unto him that is able. And of course, you have other visions says unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or ponder on or think. It then says, according to the power that worketh in us. Say, so talk to me, Apostle. The first thing we need to establish you and I in our hearts or in our spirit is that God is able. That is the very first thing. Remember, today I'm teaching you a mystery. And this that I'm teaching you now, I know for a fact you have never heard it anyway. And I'm saying that with humility. So it is a mystery. It is a revelation that is not yet born to time. So you and I now, we are actually fathoming the realm of mysteries together. We are talking about how to provoke the power of God, the enablement power of God. So where we read, Paul says, unto him that is able. And then he begins to tell us, how able God is. He then points it back, back, back to us. He says, according to the power that is at work in us. And by that, you and I then need to establish that God himself is able. And we need to establish that in our spirits and in our hearts. So we must approach God and this revelation with a statement in our hearts. And that is a statement of fact. And that statement is, he's able. Yes. Are you with me? Oh, yes. I don't know if these guys are here today. Oh, Not only is he able, but he is able to do exceedingly. You see, the word exceedingly, of course it has many angles. This word. But then again, is the word extremely. And the word, of course, extremely means to a very great degree. So what that means is if you are praying for healing, he can actually heal even others that are connected to you. So it goes beyond what you ask him for, what you think or even imagine. Are you with me? Yes. 
So you see, him being able is not an issue. Because by him creating the heavens and the earth, and of course separating the water beneath the firmament and the water above the firmament, that on its own shows us his power or rather his enablement power because by that already he has demonstrated how powerful he is so you cannot question him on how able or on how, how powerful he is so it is not a matter of is he able or not by that by creating the universe i'm not sure if somebody's getting me here he is able already. Are you with me here? So people talk about God being able, but never talk about how to provoke that enablement power. One of the reasons why people today question the existence of God, some backslided, some are bitter, some left church, they don't want to hear anything about church is because they were told about this God who is able. But they were never taught how to provoke his enablement power. So for the past 10 years, they have been in church, yet there's nothing to show for it. So as a result, they have concluded that this thing, it is not as real as they teach it. Some are angry at God, yet God is not the problem. I, I, I thought this message was prophetic. I thought this message was prophetic. Maybe, uh, what is this again? What is this? Uh, YouTube. Uh, maybe YouTube is getting me. We have so many people on YouTube. Maybe YouTube is getting me. This is powerful. Say with me, he is able. <clears throat> Whether God does it or not, are you hearing me? That will never disqualify him. Or rather, that will never disqualify his enablement power. He is the uncreated creator of the universe. Remember, I said the first thing that we need to establish in our spirits is that he's able. And that is what I'm doing right now. So that when I flow and I take you higher, you're with me. Hallelujah. Now, how can I allow him? Since, Apostle, you're saying he's able. And I can tell from the scripture that he's able. How can I allow him? How can I cause him? How can I make him demonstrate or manifest in his enablement power in my life? Yes, he's able, but how do I cause him? How do I make him? You see, you need to understand something. That Let's go there because that's our main scripture. This was me laying my foundation. It is in the book of uh, Matthew. Now we are about to flow. It will make sense in a while. Don't worry. It will make sense in a while. Trust me, it will. It will make sense in a while. It is in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 8. And of course, we will read verses 1. For the sake of context, we will read verses 1. And we will go to verse 2. When he was come down from the mountain... Great multitudes followed him. Verses 2, and that is what I'm looking for. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Pay attention now. Thank you so much, Sister McGonza. Pay attention now because I'm about to wet the context of the text. And I take you higher. Because the Holy Spirit wanted me to take you higher today. So I will do that. From chapter 5 
of the book of Matthew to chapter 7 of the book of Matthew, Jesus is teaching his disciples. Of course, in, uh, in chapter 5, we know that Jesus begins to teach them about who is blessed. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the poor in the spirit. Blessed are this. Blessed are that. Then he gets to chapter 6. He teaches them prayer. He gets then to chapter 7. He is still teaching the disciples. I want you guys to follow something here. But in chapter 8, when he came down from the mountain, the Bible then declares that multitude, crowd, followed him. In chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, he's not teaching the crowd. Of course, when he was in the boat, people came to listen to him. But his main focus was his disciples. But we don't read that as he climbed the mountain, the multitude climbed the mountain with him. The only time we see the multitude is when the Lord of history came down. I don't know if you are here. You see, this crowd or these people were not after the incorruptible word of God that Jesus taught, but they were after the miraculous. Are you with me? But then again, when you get to chapter 8, verses 1, something prophetic happens. The Bible says, there came a leper. And this is what the leper says. After worshipping him, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. You know King James English sometimes. Let's go NIV. It says, if you are willing, you can make me clean. You can heal me. Are we together? You see, the leper was aware that Jesus is able. His main concern was not on the enablement power of Jesus. He knew that Jesus was able. Because he had heard of the mighty works of the Lord. Uh, but his question or statement was, if you will. Come on, church. In other words, if you are willing to heal me, yes, you can. And of course, the first thing that he says there, the Bible says, and he worshipped him, saying, Lord. The word Lord there, I'm actually looking at my Bible. The word Lord there is actually the word my owner. The one that owns me. He who owns me. And he says, if you will. He came with a mindset, with a spirit or rather a heart that knew that this man here is able. The reason why people are going in cycles is because they know, but they don't know how to provoke God. Uh, he says, if you are willing, not if you are able, Come on, church. I, know, I need to talk. Uh, I need to talk to a few people right here. YouTube, if you are there, put fire emojis. So that I know. Zoom, if you are here, wave your hand. So I know you are here. Because I'm looking at you. Believe it or not, I'm looking at you. There we go. That's more like it. That's more like it. I told you, uh, YouTube will be crazy. We have over a thousand people there. I told you it's going to be crazy anyway. So, um, and it's our first time to go live on YouTube this time of the night. So, our people are really sleeping. So, <laughs> anyway, why is this now? If you are willing, not if you are able. You see, your problem is every time you approach the throne room, every time you approach God, you approach God with the question of, are you able? He is addressing what I call the willpower of God. Not the enablement power of God. 
come on now you better hear me because i'm about to take you higher now he's addressing the willpower of god not the enablement power of god he says if you are willing not if you are able you see god is able to bless but somebody must make him god is able to deliver but somebody must make him god is able to prosper but somebody must make him god is able to heal but somebody must make him are you hearing me you see in john chapter 11 palia kabaya and you read from verses 25 from 24 25 going down you hear rather we hear a conversation between our lord and savior jesus christ and uh, the sister of lazarus if you guys remember martha martha says to jesus lord if you were here my brother will not have died jesus says to her i am the resurrection and the life in other words I don't just have a gift of resurrecting the dead. I am the resurrection. Uh, so God is that deliverance you need. God is the answer you need. God is the healing you need. It's about to make sense. Oh my God. Oh my God. God is the prosperity you need. No wonder why the Bible will put it this way. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And its righteousness and all these other things, all these other things shall be added unto you. Another vision shall follow you. I think on Zoom I'm talking to Suzanne here. Suzanne J is hearing Apostle and the rest are actually lost. They don't even know where they are. Maybe they're having another service that I don't know of. Are you people of God here? You, you, you really need to be in here. If you are in here. Watch this now. Ladies and gentlemen. The kingdom of God. Operates with the law of cause and effect. Let me say that. The kingdom of God operates with the law of cause and effect. Where something happens because something caused it to happen or prompted it to happen. Something does not happen because it wants to happen. Something does not happen because it is supposed to happen. Something happens because something caused it to happen. And once you understand that by revelation, you will operate with different sets of rules. That's why when you read James, the Bible then declares, come near to God and God shall come near to you. Watch this now. Does that mean God does not want to come nigh to you or near to you? No. But because the kingdom of God operates under the law or with the law of cause and effect, God is a reactor. Until you are able to give God something to react on, God will never react. Oh, my Lord. Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. I will try my best. I will try my best to, to talk to Robin J. There, maybe she will hear Apostle here. For every effect, for every, say with me, for every effect, for every effect. there must be a cause. Let us go to the book of Amos. I never thought I would go there. Amos chapter 3. I never thought I would go there. But anyway, let's go there. Amos chapter 3. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Say with me, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It is in the book of Amos chapter 3. And I want us to read verses 2. No, no, let's... Read verse 3, it's okay. Verse 3. Amos and going down. Three, verse three. That's correct. Can two walk together? Yes. Except they be agreed. Uh-huh. 
Will a lion roar in the forest uh -huh. when he hath no prey? Mm -hmm. Will a young lion cry out of his den mm. if he have taken nothing? My God. Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth? My God. Where no gin is for him? Mm. Shall one take up a snare from the earth mm -hmm. and have taken nothing at all? Mm -hmm. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city mm -hmm. and the people not be afraid? My God. Shall there be evil in a city? And, and the, the Lord, Lord hath not, not done, done it. My God. Watch this now. Thank you so much, Sister Nongosma. You see, for every effect, there must be a cause. Where we have just read the word of God, I love Amos. And that is because I'm a prophetic teacher. So in the school of ministry, most of the time, when I talk to the prophets, those that are in prophetic, I quote the book of Amos a lot. Right, so I love Amos. In chapter 3, and you read verses 3 going down, Amos is being told by God that two cannot walk together unless they agree. Here we see the law of cause and effect. Let me divert a little bit and I'll come back. I want to marry something to something. You see, whatever God does with humanity, he has to enter a place of fellowship. And the reason why is because he is fellowshipping in order to agree. I'll say that again. Whatever God does with humanity, with men, he has to enter a place of fellowship first. Whatever God will do with men, he will have to enter a place of fellowship first. He is fellowshipping in order to agree. So the reason of his fellowship is because he wants to agree with men. But he can't agree with men unless he fellowships with men. Until he fellowships with men. Follow me, I'm about to take you somewhere. It is through that agreement that he is going to demonstrate his power. So he fellowships with men, right? To agree with men. And it is through that agreement that he is going to demonstrate his power. It's about to make sense. By revelation, you and I, we understand that when God created from the book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to verses 25, right? God was commanding. Are we together? He used the word of command. Follow me here. I'm looking at these people, but these people are like, Apostle, what are you saying? He used the word of command. He did not enter into agreement with anybody. He did not enter into agreement to create everything that he created. God spoke and said, let there be. He was commanding and it was so. But when he gets to verse 26, everything changes. He only began to agree when he wanted to create men. Uh, the Lord shifted from command to fellowship. He said, let us make men in our own image. This is a statement of consultation. I don't know if he... If, let us make men. It is no longer him commanding. Here he has to agree, or rather he had to agree in order to create it's about to make sense. He had to agree in order to demonstrate his power. He had to enter a place of fellowship in order for him to demonstrate his enablement power. Say, I hear you, Apostle. Man was never created by a word of command. But man was created by a word of agreement. So everything or anything that God will do or will want to do between him and men, he has to agree. Because man was not created by a command but by an agreement. 
So in order for God to do anything in the life of men, God has to agree with men. But him himself, he sits alone in the solitude of himself. He is the uncreated creator. He is able. But man needs to understand something in order to provoke his enablement power. Because God does not do things because men will want him to do things. I want to continue, but I feel I'm on my own. I want to continue, but I feel I'm on my own. When you read the Bible, you realize that God in Genesis chapter 12, he had to agree with Father Abraham. Are we together? The first thing, write this one down. I'll give you about four or five. The first thing that provokes the enablement power or the will power of God is fellowship. Where you establish a relationship with him, that is the first thing. So the first thing that provokes the enablement power of God is when you enter into a fellowship, into fellowship with him. This is where you establish a relationship. So right, establish a relationship with him. God is a man of results. Are we together? I know there are people who are following God or who are after the manifestations of God. And God is aware of that. That there are people who are not after him, but after his manifestations. Are we together? So the first thing that one has to do in order to provoke the power of God, one has to establish a relationship with God. Because God is in a position where he knows that not everybody is following because they love him. The multitude followed not because they believed in the way he preached. They followed because of the miracles. He gave them bread and they came back. He said, you didn't come because you want me. You came because what? I gave you bread. So you came back for more. So God knows. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You see, there is a certain level of walking with God. That you begin to establish a relationship with God where you don't depend on men or on a man. Where your relationship, when I say where you don't depend on a man, I'm talking about where you don't depend on a prophet to pray for you. Listen, I am an apostle by God's grace in the prophetic. And I want you not to misunderstand me. I understand spiritual protocol. And I do know that by revelation, any violation to spiritual protocol is an invitation to limitations. I understand that. I'm a student of the scripture. I'm a student of spiritual warfare. I'm a student of the prophetic and the apostolic combined. And please don't misquote me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But I'm talking about certain things where you establish a relationship with God where you can talk to God yourself. I'll give an example. Say, Revel The word of the Lord came to a prophet called Isaiah saying, go and tell Hezekiel 1, 2, 3, 4. He went there, he said, get your house in order. This sickness will lead to death. Get your house in order. You are going. Now, I want you to understand something. And most people don't know this or don't pay attention to this. Hezekiel, when he heard that word from prophet Isaiah, he did not dispute. Okay. He did not argue. He heard he was going, but he did not dispute. And that is because over the years, he had established a relationship with Yahweh. 
The word came through a prophet that he must get his house in order. But he did not speak to Isaiah about what was in his heart. But the Bible says, and he turned and faced the wall. And he spoke to the Lord. Ah, ah they missed it. Ah, USA, I thought you were fast. You are very slow. Mm -mm. <laughs> I hate to tell you that. No. <laughs> no, 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 you are slow. <laughs> no, I pray for you. <laughs> I'm saying that with humility. I, th I thought you were the fastest. I thought you were the ones who could just catch revelation like that. I guess I was mistaken here. Yeah. <laughs> I repent. <laughs> Listen. Simple story. Isaiah is sent to the house of Ezekiel. He gets there. He says, Hezekiel, uh, Hezekiah, go get your things in order because you're about to check out. Number one, the king does not dispute. The king does not argue. It means this man knew something. And instead of him talking to the prophet who gave that word. Because such prophecies, if they come from such oracles, you will conclude this is an unconditional prophecy. Meaning you cannot alter it. And you cannot cause it to be suspended. But because over the years he had established a relationship with Yahweh, with God, he did not speak back to the prophet and say, prophet, can you speak to God on my behalf? Can you negotiate on my behalf since he told you? Rather, he turned and he began to speak to Yahweh. And hear me in the Holy Ghost. Hezekiah's prayer was not long. Hence, I told you in my last teaching, and I said this thing of, he, listening to people telling you you must pray five hours a day you must pray 12 hours a day please now please now most of those people don't even pray what they are telling you to pray when do you get time to spend with your children when do you get time to uh, work when do you get time to, uh, uh, to, to to read the bible to study the bible to educate yourself to build yourself up you you are praying the whole 12 hours are you fighting God Jesus himself said at least an hour. And the reason why Jesus said at least an hour is because of what he was about to face. Are we together? So much prayer was needed. And I told you, listen, I'm a man of prayer. We pray until prayer starts praying through us. In our church, somebody came and said, this church, they pray a lot. And I, was, I think I was talking about it this past two weeks or something. Yeah. That our church prays that everybody that comes to this church will tell you that I've never been in a church that prays like this. Hear me very well. That's why I answered a question when somebody asked, how long should a believer pray? And I told you, I said, you pray until you prevail. You pray until you know it's done. Are we together? So if you are praying and the Holy Ghost keeps, keeps on saying pray, he keeps on saying pray, you can pray five hours. And somebody can pray, praying for the very same thing, but can pray five minutes. And God will answer them. It is not about how loud you are. How charismatic you are. Come on, now we need to mature. There are certain things that when you grow in the things of God, you realize you are childish. That's why people fight God in their prayer. Some, they will be taking their blanket, swinging them and swinging in prayer they are doing all this sort of thing some they are taking pillows eating their children they are in prayer and god himself is surprised what is happening right here and you wonder why nothing happens no power no nothing the kingdom of god is not in ways brothers and sisters it's in the demonstration of power are, are you with me so here's here's a key, this guy right I want you to understand that he did not take time. How do I know that he did not take time? I know that by revelation. Because the Bible says, while he was in, while Isaiah the prophet, because he gave him the word, he left. While Isaiah was in the aisle, before he went out of the house of the king, the Lord spoke to Isaiah. 
So it was not a one hour thing. He gave him a word and he was leaving. Before he exited the house of the king, God's word came on the prophet. And the prophet received the word that tell him I've added 15 years. Why will this guy not speak to the prophet to negotiate? Why will he take it upon himself to speak to the Lord? It's because he knew how to provoke the enablement power of God. And here we see the first key that we spoke about, which is to establish a relationship with God. Once a man or a woman has a relationship with God, that man or that woman of God becomes a powerhouse. Hmm. Say, I hear you. Let us go back to Matthew. I'm closing now. I'm closing now. I'm, I'm closing now. Let us go to Matthew 8, verses 2, because that's our main text for the day, Matthew. main scripture for the day. So I want us to read again there. Mm -mm, I don't want to go to Genesis. I don't know why my Bible keeps taking me to Hebrews. And there is another thing that I can marry to this, but I'm not going there. No, not today. Uh huh. Matthew chapter 8, verse 2. Uh huh. And behold, mm -hmm. there came a leper mm -hmm. and worshipped him, saying, uh -huh. So, number two, be a worshiper. You want to provoke the enablement power of God, be a worshiper. Now, what I want you to understand is that. Most people, what they do at church is not worship. Worship is personal, not congregational. <laughs> Scripture declares in the book of John, time will come, blah, 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 blah. But listen to what the Lord says to that woman, the, Sam the Samaritan woman. We, we remember, right, in John 4. The Lord says, for my father seeketh such. But before that, he says, a time will come and a time has come. Where true worshippers, not where worshippers, but true worshippers, will worship the father in what? In truth and in spirit. Oh, I think we need to read it. Verse 23, but the hour cometh and now is when the worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Right? Watch this now. It says, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. You know what, that's, what does that mean? It means when I worship where I am or every time I worship where I am, I don't ascend. But God comes where I am. I don't know if they got it. So, the Lord himself, God himself, he is forever on a hand. Uh, I think Stephanie Mahone is hearing me. I think Peggy Knight is hearing me. Who else is hearing? Michelle Rosin Kingsley is hearing Apostle. Michael Johnson is hearing. Mary, Mary, Maria is hearing, Apostle. Jessica, are you hearing me, people of God? Ah, uh, Grace Yella is here. I, I knew, I knew, I, I, I knew it. She's hearing me. I knew she was going to hear me. Lynette, are you hearing, Apostle? A lot of people are getting it. Yeah. Joshua. Joshua K. Jacob, are you, are you with Apostle? Su Xiong, are you here? Aphrodite is here. People are here. People are getting it. YouTube, I know you are getting it because I'm seeing fire emojis. I'm seeing fire emojis. Now, watch this now. Watch this now. You need, number one, to establish a relationship. Number two, you need to be a true worshiper. How do you know that you have entered a dimension of being a true worshiper? 
when you worship God, not because you are in the sanctuary. Does that make sense? That, that's how simple it is for you to know. But if the only time you worship God is on a Sunday, when a service is ongoing, you are not yet a true worship. You are compelled to worship. Yes, ma'am. A true worshiper worships the Father. You know, the Bible says a time will come and the time has come. You heard that Jesus was talking about to this woman that back in the days they used to go away to the mountains. But this time around, you don't have to be in the mountain. What that means is you can be in your car. You can be at your workplace and you just move yourself. You just separate yourself and begin to worship him. A lot of people are not seeing the enablement power of God because they talk worship. They don't do worship. They participate in worship, but they are not worshippers. When last did you weep yourself? Where you were weeping like, 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 uh, you know, and you are worshiping the Lord. When last did you lift up your holy hands and glorify him on your own? When last did you switch off your TV and put your phone on flight mode, switch it off rather, and say, this next 30 minutes is me and the Lord. I'm going to tell him how beautiful he is. Because he, the Bible speaks about, listen to this, ah, yeah. those that come before God, they must believe that he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So as you approach his throne, you begin to tell him who he is, as if he does not know, but you begin to tell him. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, yes, angels worship him. But whenever you worship him, God moves. That's why Satan hates you. Satan hates believers. Satan hates true worshipers. Because that was what? His occupation. Satan, according to the book of Ezekiel, he is the only angel that the Bible tells us that he was built with instruments within him, with pipes. Are we together? That when he began to sing a keyboard, he needed no keyboard. A keyboard will be playing as he's singing. You'll hear all sorts of music. Are we together? He was the choir master. But guess what? When he was cast out of heaven, God did not take that which he had put in him. I don't know if you're hearing me. As he left heaven, hence from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, I'm talking about angels worshipping, not the songs of the redeemed and all of these things that the psalmist maybe talk about, Mar Miriam, the sister of Moses talks about. I'm talking about angels right here, songs that are in the Bible. You only see two songs that are sang by angels. And the famous one is Holy, Holy. Are you telling me that angels don't have lyrics? Oh, you missed it, I know. They don't have something to say to God. Oh, I, I, you are missing the revelation already. No, 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 no. It's because angels are built in a certain way. And we are built in a certain way. Oh, Lord. Hmm. That's why when we worship him, we cause him to seek us. His presence will begin to follow us. Sometimes you need not to pray, God, walk with me. Worship him. One time a guy came to me and said, how do I get God to protect me? I said, very simple. Have his word. He said, what do you mean? I said, the Bible declares he watches over his word to perform it. So the more word in you, the more God watches the, over the word 
that is in you. So because the word is in you and you are a carrier of the word, then God begins to watch over you. So you are what we call word protected, God protected. Oh my God. Oh my God. Are we, are we, are we flowing here? So the first thing that the man said was what? The Bible says, and he worshipped him. Are we together? And he did what? He worshipped him. Say with me, and he worshipped him. So now, that's our number two, right? Remember the first thing, you establish a relationship with God, right? And number two, learn, be a worshipper. Are we together? Now, watch this now. Are you with me? He says, if thou will, thou canst make me clean. If you are willing. Number three, be prayerful. Are we together? And with that, put a slash and say faith. So the man knew that the man I'm talking to has the ability to heal me. Meaning the man had faith already. The man was praying to Jesus when he said, if you are willing, you can make me clean. You can heal me. He was praying to Jesus. He was not saying, Lord, can you make me? Do you think, uh, oh Lord, please. No, he said, if you are willing, Kalina Manoska Venda. Let's move. I'm about to close. I'm feeling fire. Mm, let me close. This is too much on me. Watch this now. Verses 3. And Jesus. Rev, is it on the screen? Do we have the scriptures on the screen? Put uh, Matthew 8, verses 3. So that everybody. Kenyatta is hearing apostle. He's on the screen now. All right. Matthew 8, verse 3, right? Thank you, Rev. And Jesus put forth what? His hand. And touched him, saying, I will. <laughs> be thou clean. Another vision will say, be thou healed. Or be healed. He says, if you are willing, and Jesus said, I will. Men tapped in the willpower of God. And Jesus had no choice. He said, I will. Be thou clean. Watch this now. I know you're not getting it as yet. And immediately, hear this, his leprosy was cleansed. Immediately, suddenly, all of a sudden, he was healed. Come on, church, hear me here. Pay attention to what Apostle is saying. He was healed immediately. Pay attention. But here's the mystery. Verse 4 will finish you. And Jesus said unto him, See, thou tell no man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priest and give offering. Offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto God. Or unto them, depending on the vision you are reading from. Right? Watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. Ah, they missed it. <laughs> Jesus, I thought this man is healed already. What is, all of, what is verse 4 all about? Because the Bible says immediately the man was healed, was cleansed. Immediately. So why verse 4? Jesus in verse 4 gives him an instruction. I've given you three, right? Number one was establish a relationship with God. Number two, be a worshiper. Number three, be prayerful and have faith, right? Number four, be a giver. Be a what? Be a giver. And I'm not just talking about a giver because you are compelled to. You see, the Bible talks about do not give because you are compelled to give. For God loves a cheerful giver. I know giving in the body of Christ has been abused. But hear me in the Holy Ghost, not with your ears of the flesh. Just because men 
abused something, it does not mean it does not work. And the people that abuse giving or people who attack giving are people with no results. And I pray that one day God will allow me, and I keep singing this, to preach on giving. I don't have a message on giving. Like a message strictly on giving. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. And I pray that one day God will allow me to teach on tithe. <laughs> There's a reason why I don't teach on tithe. Because the day I teach on tithe, it will be crazy. So I choose wisdom. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you <laughs> and give you an understanding. Are you hearing me? Because whatever I teach, I teach the word. I don't teach funny business. If you have followed me for some time, I teach the word. That's it. Watch this now. Be a giver. And not just a giver. Be a radical what? Giver. Be a radical giver. You want to see God show forth his power. You want to see the enablement power of God. The able, listen, the, the able side of God. Be a worshiper. Be a prayerful believer. Be a giver. That's why there are people who forever see the manifestations of God, yet they don't believe as much as you do. It's because they know or they have tapped in dimensions that they now know how to provoke the enablement power of God. Okay. I need to go deeper here. Because somebody's like, huh? What is he saying? Huh? What is he saying? Let me tell you. <laughs> In the book of John chapter 11, let's go there. Ah, Kalusha Takabaya. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hear this. Hear this. There are some things, and you people here, you are a lot. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. There are some things God will do them because you gave. In Revelation 8, the Bible says, and the prayers of the saints and the offering of the saints were mixed together. When the angel appeared to Cornelius, this is something you are not taught. You are just taught, give, you shall prosper. Give, you shall prosper. No. Are we hearing me? We are not just giving to prosper. Sometimes we are giving to open spiritual portals. You can limit to prosperity. No, I know. Listen, I'm not fighting anybody. Because people, when people say this, like, no, listen to what he's saying. He's saying people should not give. Listen to me. I'm not saying that. I know the book of uh, Psalm declares that God takes pleasure in the prosperity of the people or his people who favor his righteous cause. And those are givers. There, David had understood by revelation that yes, I cannot build God a house, but I will make a plan and I will contribute. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So he understood that God favors people who favor his righteous cause. And he prospers them. So hear me. It, when we give, we don't just give to prosper. No, forget about it. That is a low, low level. That's what people use uh, to get money out of people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is more into it. Your child at school might not be excelling. And you give like that. And supernatural intelligence rests on your child. Your husband might not be saved. Forget about prosperity. Forget about that. I know scripture says give, it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. But it is not limited to that. That's why you need to always attach a need to it. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. Hear me in the what? In the Holy Ghost. Ah, we'll go. You see now, I want to talk about that. The reason why I'm emphasizing on this is because people fight it a lot. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Ah, I don't want to go there. If I go there, we'll start another service. Hey, no, please don't make me go there. Watch this in the Holy Ghost. There are portals in the spirit that will only worship can open. There are portals in the spirit that only giving. But I want you to understand that giving has an upper hand. And the reason why giving has an upper hand is, one, is because of one thing. God is a giver. And the reason why every time a person give, give, gives and God reacts is because God does not want to have a better giver than himself. I don't know if they got the revelation. So God will not allow somebody to be a better giver than him. That's why he did not allow Abraham to sacrifice his son. Because he knew that in years to come, he is going to sacrifice his son. So if Abraham will have sacrificed his son, today we'll be reading, but even Abraham sacrificed his son. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And it was after when Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son that God said, you know what? Now I know you love me. Uh -uh. So when God called him out, God never knew that Abraham loved him. It's because when it comes to the things of God, there is a law of what? Effect and what? And cause. Exactly. It was at that mountain that the Lord said, now I know you love me. Meaning you can walk with God. And God still wonders if you love him. It's in your Bible. He says, now I know you love me. Uh -uh. And Abraham was a blessed man. I don't know if you guys are getting it. Once you understand certain things by revelation, you need not to be pushed by any man. You don't have to wait for a Sunday service. Your child can literally be sick right now. And you pray for him. Pray for him or something. And you begin to offer. It is because, listen, Cornelius, the Bible says, and the angel appeared to Cornelius in extent. And the angel said what? This is in your Bible. He said, your giving, your offerings have become a memorial before God. And your prayers were heard. And what was his prayer? Salvation. But why is this the first thing that the angel says? The angel speaks about his arms. He's giving. Why? Because if, listen to me. No giving goes unnoticed. Amen. Not even one. You know why? It's because they are witnesses according to Hebrews 11 verse 4. That just sits like this. And they are there to witness. It's, it's as if they record. Anyway, please go to John 11. The Bible says, by faith, the Hebrews 11 verse 4, by faith, able. So I know what I'm talking about, just in case somebody thinks I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's go. Please read um, John 11 verse 1. Hey, it's too much power here. Amen. The book of John chapter 11 verse 1. Yeah. Now a certain man was sick, uh -huh. named Lazarus uh -huh. of Bethany, uh -huh. the town of Mary and her sister Martha. Who was sick? Lazarus. Lazarus. Come on, church. Who yeah. was sick? Lazarus. Uh-huh. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord. What verse is that? Verse 2, Apostle. Okay, let's start from verse 1 again. Now a certain man was sick, uh -huh. named Lazarus yes. of Bethany, yeah. the town of Mary and her sister Martha. Yeah. It was that Mary. Now, a certain man was? Sick. Yeah. Named Lazarus. Named Lazarus. What was the name of the man? Lazarus. So who was sick? Lazarus. You are with me. Uh-huh. Of Bethany. The town of Mary and her sister? Martha. Martha. Verse 2 will shock you. Uh-huh. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment. Uh-huh. And wiped his feet with her hair. My God. Whose brother Lazarus was sick. The issue was about the sick Lazarus. But the writer shifts and talks about the oil. Oh, you're not hearing me. No, you're not hearing me. There are certain things that provoke the enablement power of God. 
that God will be forced to remember something. These are wrong people. Please put me to, wrong, to, to the right people that I'm here to minister to. I'm teaching you on how to provoke. Isn't it your only taught prayer? You're not taught about fellowship, which is to establish the a relationship, which I emphasized on. We went to Hezekiah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The story here is not about this woman, Mary. The story is about sick Lazarus. But the writer had to connect it. Watch this now. Are you with me? When Jesus arrived, because when you read there, he's telling the disciples, this Lazarus is, you know, sick and he abode more days and he told them he's, now he's sleeping. Let's go and wake him up and blah, blah, blah. He gets there. Watch this now. He gets to the grave. This is a revelation that will blow your mind. Then Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> He called him by his name. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Why did he need to resurrect everyone who was dead? He was in the graves, graveyards, where people died, others died before Lazarus was born. He is the resurrection and the life. Why didn't he resurrect others? You see? Once you don't know how to provoke the enablement power of God, you'll be murmuring. You'll say, but you are doing it for others. Yay, they know how to provoke. Oh my God, they didn't hear what I just said. And of course, there are certain things that are done by faith, by grace. But there are those that who now provoke. They enable the power of God. Say with me, how to provoke the power of God. And say provoking the power of God. <clears throat> Jesus would have said, but there is a young girl that just passed on. Maybe five days ago. Let me just bring that girl back to life. Probably the family was there. He called him by his name. Why? Because if he had said come out, all the dead would have came out. Because Jesus does not possess just a gift of resurrecting the dead. He is the resurrection. So he had to call him by his name. Lazarus, come forth. But when we read in verses uh, 1 and 2, we see that there was a relationship that was established between Jesus and this family. And we see that this relationship had gone even deeper when Jesus said, Lazarus, our friend. When Jesus was about to go, he says to his disciples, I have called you servants, but now I call you friends. Why? Because the relationship had taken another level. And God can only reveal mysteries to people who he has established the relationship with. The secrets of the Lord are not with the prophets. The secrets of the Lord are not with the apostles and teachers and pastors. The secrets of the Lord are with people who have established a relationship with him. And those that have established a relationship with him are those that fear him. Because the more you establish a relationship with him, the more you fear him. That's why the Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with those who fear him. But you can't fear him until or unless you build a relationship with him. I don't know if they're getting it. <laughs> the mystery here is this. Let me tell you something. Say, tell me, Apostle. Tell me, Apostle. The mystery here is this, right? In eternity, your car is already there. In eternity, your healing is already there. In eternity, your promotion is already there. Your gift, your ability to see in the spirit, in eternity is already there. The healing anointing you have been praying for in eternity is already there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when it is time for it to come down, God will want you to establish a relationship with him. Or rather, God will want to establish a relationship with you. Remember, he establishes a relationship in order to agree. 
You remember when we started, when we were talking about it? Exactly. Glory be to God. God could not bless Abraham or couldn't bless Abraham without first establishing a relationship with him. He said, come out. And he came out. And guess what? God began to establish a relationship with Abraham. A blessing is not a problem. Later on, God said, when he wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, you guys remember, he said, shall I hide what I'm about to do? And then he says, no, I cannot hide this to my friend Abraham. He called Abraham a friend. And Abraham was able to negotiate for Sodoma and Gomorrah and for Lot, his cousin, because of a relationship that he had with God. Some of you, you are strangers in the presence of God, but you act like something very big. I'm telling you. Even angels are shocked. Say, oh, well, oh, okay, welcome back. The Bible says, oh, he that dwelleth. He that what? Dwelleth. In the secret place of the most high. Not he that visiteth. He that dwelleth. Come on, USA. I thought you were ready. And you are a country that God is raising seers and prophets and dreamers. People who are awakened. God is raising people with an unction or the anointing of Elijah. And that is because the days of Baal have returned. But the days of Baal cannot return without the days of Elijah. And the days of Baal are starting in your own country, USA. As much as the enemy is working extra time, raising his people who are not ashamed, who are not apologetic, God is doing that. I feel I'm on my own here. Women will begin to dream again. Satan will be seen from far. Women will pick up things in the spirit, signals and frequencies through visions, spiritual visions, external visions, closed visions, twilight visions, internal visions. People will dream dreams. That you will begin to know in a dream that you are dreaming. That you will be in a dream and you go, I'm dreaming. This is a dream. Oh, I feel, I feel the people on YouTube are actually the one receiving it. Wave your hand in the Holy Ghost. Wave your hand in the Holy Ghost. And say, I'm gifted. I'm gifted. Say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Say, I'm gifted. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Some of you need to understand that you are a key to a generation. You can't sleep on it. If you miss it, it can take God five generations to raise somebody like you. Some of you, I prayed for one of my daughters actually from uh, USA. She was like, oh, uh, Apostle, there's this man who uh, does not even worship God, does not even believe in God, uh, took my position. I was supposed to be the CEO because I was the acting CEO. But now when the time came, they did not appoint me. They put this man. And I've been praying, I've been fasting. <clears throat> Apostle, can you pray? Because I know that every time you pray, something happens. And while she was talking, the Lord opened my eyes. I said to her, this man here that you are talking about, you cannot move him. I remember she said to me, Apostle, are you saying he's more powerful? Whatever he's worshipping is more powerful than our God. I said, I did not say that. As you are talking about him, I mentioned the name. I said, is his name this? She said, yes. I said, the Lord showed me his grandmother 
who entered a covenant with God and said, in my generation, no one will rise to come down. And God is a God who keeps a covenant. And I gave an example. Say, Israel got in trouble with God. And every time God wanted to turn his back on Israel, he will remember the covenant he entered with Abraham or he had with Abraham. So even the man there, him, he's lost, yes. But God is still honoring that covenant. And she asked me a question. She said, Apostle, but how do I overturn that? I said, by only one thing. She said, what? I said, by finding favor in the eyes of the Lord. But other than that, if there is no favor to speak here, that man we won't unseat him. And some of you don't understand. That's what the Bible says. Because you have rejected knowledge, let's start it nicely. It says, my people die because they lack knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject you as my priests. And I will reject you and your children's children. So your children's children are suffering because of you. They are rejected not because they did something. That's why some of you, you need to understand that you are a key to a generation. That's why you need to be able to provoke the power of God for the sake of those that are coming after you. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray for you wherever you are. I pray for you wherever you are. That God will touch you in a mighty way. That God will begin to remember you. I feel in my spirit, that said the Lord, God wants to reveal himself to you. As, remember, I told you this is a prophetic message. I'm talking to you. The person that I'm here for, God wants to reveal himself to you. And not only that, he wants to stand tall through you. He wants you to become a testimony of his glory. Where people, when they look at you, they will say, surely the face of Jesus is shining on this person's life. But there are certain things that you need to be serious about. And how do you start building a strong relationship with God? By feeding on the word. And how do you feed on the word? By meditating on the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Where your appetite for God goes beyond what you think he can do. Because you know he's able. So your appetite is not based on how able he is. Because already you know he's able. Are you hearing me? Some people don't understand that sometimes when you pray, it is not what you pray for that God gives. Uh, hey. Sometimes you pray for something and God will say, but the problem you are dealing with is not subject to prayer. Because not every problem is subject to prayer. Some problems are subject to forgiveness. Some they are subject to wisdom. Are you hearing me? What I pray for is for believers to be awakened. USA, this is your time. You might be watching here and you're not in the US. And you are in here today. It means you are meant to be here. This is your time. There is an awakening. We are no longer praying for revival. Revival is here. Amen. Revival is here. And the enemy is waking extra time. And that is because rapture is around the corner. And God is raising you. You shall take over your community through the gospel of Jesus Christ. You shall take over your city through the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You shall take over nations through the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At your workplace, God will shine through you. Even in your house, God will shine through you. That those that are shooting and firing arrows at you, those arrows will fire back. 
without you even knowing because of the amount of light that you carry that they will come and say not this one there's too much light here and they will go back and strike the one that sent it the kingdom of God is not for sanctified ceases. Are you hearing me? It's for men and women who know I walk with God. I walk with God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. I, I, I've got backing. I'm heavily defended. I'm God protected. I told one of my daughters, she was from Brazil. She's like, oh, Papa, when will I prophesy? Uh, she just met, she just joined our mentorship program. Papa, when will I prophesy? I said, you, I don't see you prophesying in any, anytime soon. She said, ah, Papa, what do you mean? I said, your hunger for the prophetic is bigger than the hunger for God. And be careful because the enemy will use that. You begin to hear voices and if you're not able to descend and descend, you think it's God. Hear me. This is a season where you should be hungry for God, where you should bend. The Bible speaks about returning to the first love in the book of Revelation chapter 2. Going back to the first love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you used to wake up in the AMs, go ahead. Set the alarm. Hallelujah. Put on the alarm. Wake up and begin to radagai. Wake up and begin to kabash. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Prayer is the only thing that can go to the future. Wait for you and rearrange things. Worship will cause God to come down and look for you. Are you hearing me? Giving compels God to answer. Because with God, the way over is the way under. Say glory somebody. Glory. I pray for you wherever you are. So. I want to release one prophetic word. I don't like talking too much. But if you receive it with everything that is in you, within seven days you are coming back with a testimony. So. If you receive with everything that is in you, you are coming back with a testimony. In the name of Jesus, I declare and I decree that in this month of October, this very month that we are in, you shall break limits. That is so. You shall break barriers. That is so. You shall break records. That is so. You shall cross lines. That is so. What stopped others will not stop you. That is so. What stopped your mother will not stop you. That what stopped your father will not stop you. So. What stopped your uncles will not stop you. So. In the name of Jesus. So. I said you are a record breaker. So. You will see wonders this month. So. You will see the wonders of God this month. So. Both in your spirit and in your physical life. If you are sick in your body, healing is taking place as we are talking right that now. So. If there is somebody sick in your house, healing is taking place. That Believe it. So. Don't stop believing it. That I said so. don't stop believing it. So. Don't stop believing it. So. If you are not working, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that God is making a way for you. That is so. God is opening doors for you. If you are trusting God for salary increment, I declare right now, let there be increase in every area of your life. So. The will of God for you is to prosper and be in good health. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. The Bible says if a man is unable to provide for his family or his relatives, the Bible declares he is worse than an unbeliever and he has denied the faith. That will never be your portion. That, that is the so. book of First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. It will never be your portion. That God will use you to bless others. God will use you. Kalabaro, I feel somebody here. You are entering a dimension you have never entered before. In Jesus precious name. Lord we glorify you. 
your children are blessed. Your children's children are blessed. Say, but apostle, I don't have children. Your children are blessed. Those that rejected you will come back looking for you. Because of the power of God that is going to be at work in your life. Hallelujah. It is done. It is done. Hallelujah. Are we ready to bless the Lord with our substance? It's our service and we understand the power of giving. Hallelujah. Are we ready to bless God with our substance? Are we ready to honor God with our substance? Giving time? Blessing time. So we are entering a giving time. Hallelujah. Be part of the moment. And here's what I will advise you. Attach a need to it. You don't necessarily need to write it when you do it. You can, but you can speak it in your spirit. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I don't know who. I don't know why. As I'm talking to you now, I don't know if you guys remember when I prophesied to Brother Bennett Alali at the time he came for the first time, I think last of last year. And I said supernatural debt cancellation. And over 500,000 was canceled. In the U.S. there, we had a testimony of uh, somebody, supernatural debt cancellation, $720,000, right? And that's one of the biggest testimonies from the U.S. Hear me. I don't know who, but the supernatural debt cancellation that is happening. Supernaturally, God is taking care of somebody's debt right now. Why don't say, but God is able to do exceeding abundantly. More than what one can think, imagine, or even ask. So don't conceptualize God. Hallelujah. Some of you that say, the Lord, the creditors will not come. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You better believe it. So I want us to get into giving moment right now and trust God for the extraordinary. Hallelujah. So I believe Rev will help us and put uh, the giving details right on the screen right they are on the screen already thank you rev are they on the screen already thank you rev it's giving time god bless everybody that is giving let's go go ahead and honor god with your substance hallelujah and attach a need to it and i love it when people give we pray hallelujah and you pray wherever you are as well let's pray let's pray for every person giving Whatever it is that they are trusting God, we are in a, in a season of restoration. We are in a season of restitution. Somebody, something is happening. God is rearranging your spiritual life. The gift that he has put in you will be made manifest. God is awakening your ear ears of the spirit he's opening your eyes the scales that are in your eyes are falling off seer begin to see prophet begin to hear Calabaros. we are praying for you we are praying for you wherever you are as as you honor god with your giving with your substance as you are offering let your offering become a memorial before god in the name of jesus
in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We are still giving. And I pray for you. I pray for you. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. And this is what the Lord spoke to me about earlier on today. He said, everybody that will be there, you must tell them that it is well with your soul. So hear me wherever you are, it is well with your soul. And it is well with your finances. You, you need to believe God for that one. It is well with your finances. And receive supernatural debt cancellation. I keep hearing that. I, I, I keep hearing that. Receive supernatural debt cancellation right now. By the ability of the spirit. Let altars that are diabolic be dismantled. Let altars that you don't even know about yet have been altering your life be destroyed in the name of Jesus. May they never come together. When God wanted to use Gideon, he said, first Gideon, tear down the altars of your father's house. Why will God be concerned about altars? Because altars are portals. And altars can be monuments. But sometimes altars can be covenants in people. So I pray for you wherever you are. Whatever it is that has been holding you, be released and be free in the name of Jesus. And whatever that has been trying to stop you from living the life God wants you to live, may it release you. May you be released in the name of Jesus. May you be set free in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. Say pray for me, Apostle. 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 I pray for you. I pray for you. I pray for you. I pray for you. What was to take you 10 years, I declare and I decree, it shall take you two years. What took other six years to build shall take you one year, six months to build. Let there be supernatural speed. Let there be supernatural blessings in your life. I declare and I decree that your territory is being enlarged. That you begin to accommodate more than what you used to. In Jesus' precious name. That Say that is so. That is so. Shola Ugandi, I pray for you. I don't know if Shola is getting me. I think he doesn't even know I'm calling him. Uh, James Mwila, Patricia Daga, I pray for you. Blessings, Akiko, I pray for you. I pray for you. Everybody who's typing, I pray for you. Somebody saying, I just gave, please pray for my supernatural death. Listen, I don't, I don't have to pray the moment you give. Are, you, are, you, are we together? Yeah. I don't have to pray for it to happen. Giving is the highest way or the greatest way to demonstrate faith. Giving is your photocopy of your faith. Yes. Faith is demonstrated in giving. That's it. <laughs> so it is done. Believe it. Believe it's done. As I'm declaring right now, angels are assigned to work on your behalf. And if you can, but this one is not for everybody. Prophetically, if this is your message and what I'm about to say, I want you to go ahead and do it. If you have been going through delay, backwardness, or cycles, or felt like you are stagnant, I want you right now in the Holy Ghost 
where you want to just have a breakthrough, where your life needs to start making sense the way you know it ought to be making sense in Christ. If you are the one right now, I want you to go ahead and type enough is enough. Yeah? Just type enough it. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Say with me, enough is enough. Enough is what? Enough is enough. See, a lot of people are typing enough is. It, it, listen, it shall not be otherwise. May you enter God's rest as you establish a strong relationship with Yahweh. As you go back into being a worshiper that God wants you to be. As you become a radical giver, not only in church, but being a blessing to others. Amen. Hear me. As you, are, as you go back to your prayer life. And some of you don't need to go back because you're already there. Hear me. As you work more on your prayer life, you will begin to see results like there is no tomorrow. In this season, hunger for nothing but God. That even in your prayer, tell him, God, I want nothing but you. You will see. Hallelujah. It is done. Put your hands together for Jesus. It is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. We, we are so honored to, to be preaching the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Could have been anybody. But we thank God for his grace. The announcement that I have today is very simple. I believe we, we still have our website up for Mentor Point. We have a mentorship program. I know it's full. My mentees are actually shocked tonight, right now. Uh, to say, ah, is there space? Because people wanted to join, but there was no space. Yes, there, is, there are two spaces that were opened yesterday. So, uh, we have a mentorship class. We have a lot of people, hundreds of people that are part of it. It's a six months mentorship uh, thing. So many, so much benefits in it. So if you feel you want to be part of our mentorship program, being mentored by Apostle Mies and so I can ready for six months, um, it goes beyond that. Um, you know, I have a relationship with my mentees. There's just so much that is happening. Uh, hurry and go to Dr. Mies Mentor Point and right there you sign up and join the mentorship program we started august but we we have all the teachings so you'll catch up and of course you'll have one-on-one -on -one with me and all of that just to take you through some few things but yes so i just wanted to say that we have two spaces that are open uh, my mentees are shocked because it's full yeah we do have two space uh, two spaces so to say so if you are in here, you want to join, go ahead and go to Dr. Me's Mentor Point, and may, may God bless you. Thank you so much. I love you. I'll be seeing you Sunday. Uh, our service starts at uh, 10 a.m. Central African time, live on Zoom, but on YouTube we come in 12 uh, p.m. Uh, this Sunday is our anointing Sunday uh, service. I'll be anointing everybody in the church. And also those that are watching online, I will want you to have uh, a bottle of oil, a bowl of oil. Your own oil is still okay. I'll give an instruction on what to do. Just a small oil, all right. And wherever you are in the world, glory be to God. So I love you and I pray for you. And thank you so much for being here. This is Apostle Miz Mzwaket and Kredi. Uh, and somebody say, where can I get your books? On Amazon. Simple Amazon. So you can go to Amazon, type my name, Mizum Zwaget and Credit, and you'll see um, all the books. But I recommend two, though 